Yeah, that's, that's the same way that used to come down. Wow. Good morning, everyone. Happy second Sunday of Advent. Um, as we continue, our efforts to make sure that the technology works, things jump around a little bit, um, but uh, that will all be great. So anyway, glad you all are here and I am going to mute all and uh, for the folks outside and we will look forward to seeing you on the other side. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
<clears throat> Today is the second Sunday of Advent. During the season of Advent, we are preparing for the coming of Jesus on Christmas Day. In today's gospel, John the Baptist cries out in the wilderness of Judea, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Open, Open our, our eyes, O Lord, as we prepare the way for your coming. John the Baptist challenged the people to change their ways and to be prepared for the new thing that God was going to be, do among them. John knew the change is different, but he believed in, in the promises God had made with his people. Open our eyes, O Lord, as we prepare the way for your coming. We light this candle, the second candle of Advent, to remind us to live our lives with integrity and compassion for those who are denied justice so that we are prepared to welcome Christ when he comes. Open our eyes, O Lord, as we prepare the way for your coming. In our lives and in our community, let us identify the crooked roads that need to be made straight and the rough roads that need to be made smooth so that Jesus may come with power and with great glory. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, so that we may see the salvation you have promised for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Baruch. Take off your mourning clothes and oppress in Jerusalem. Dress yourself in the dignity of God's glory forever. Wrap the justice that comes from God around yourself like a robe. Place the eternal one's glory on your head like a crown. God will show your brilliance everywhere under heaven. God will give you his, this name by which to be called forever the peace that comes from justice, the honor that comes from the reverence of God. Get up, Jerusalem, stand up, excuse me, stand on the high place and look around to the east. See your children gathered from the west to the east by the Holy One's word as they rejoice that God has remembered them. They went out from you not on foot, driven along by their enemies, but God, will bring them back to you, carried aloft with glory as on a royal throne. God has ordered every high mountain and the internal hills to be brought down and the valleys to be filled in to level the ground so that Israel may walk safely in God's glory. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel. <clears throat> with God's command. God will leave Israel with gladness by the light that shines forth from his glory and the mercy and righteousness that will come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today is the, the song of Zechariah. Let us read it to, together. Blessed be the Lord. He has come to his people and set them free has raised us up a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteousness in the sight 
all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will be go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of his sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Paul's letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers. I am thankful. I am thankful for all of you every time I pray, and it's always a prayer full of joy. I'm glad because of the way you have been my partners in in the ministry of the gospel, and from the time you first believed it until now. I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in, in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Christ Jesus. I have good reason to think this way about all of you because I keep you in my heart. You are all my partners in God's grace, both during my time in prison and in the defense and the support of the gospel. God is my witness that I feel affection for all of you and with the compassion of Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> This is my prayer that your love might become even more and more rich with the knowledge and of all kinds of insight. I pray this so that you might be able to decide what really matters and so will be sincere and blameless on the day of Christ. I pray that you will then be filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes from Jesus Christ in order to give glory and praise to God. The, the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Yes. In the 15th year of the rule of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea and Herod was ruler over Galilee, his brother Philip was ruler of Iternea and Trichonitis and Lysanias, was ruler over Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. John went throughout the region of the Jordan River calling for people to be baptized to show they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. This is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight and the rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord our God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we begin, or before I begin, um, at the later service, uh, we will uh, be treated to um, a choral piece called the Gospel Magnificat. And since it's a big part of that service, it's part of my sermon, and so we've got to read it so that you have something to go by as, as I make reference. So um, let's read this, and we'll change it up from the psalm. We'll read this by half verse, all right? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. From this day, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. He has mercy on those who fear him. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. And has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise mercy. The promise he made to our fathers. To Abraham and Earlier this week, Connie, our organist, pianist, choir director extraordinaire, and I were discussing the hymns that we would use for the various services on Christmas Eve and the Sunday after Christmas. Generally, we try to match the hymns with the lectionary, that guide for how Episcopalians are to read scripture in worship. And when it came to Christmas Eve, that was no problem. We've done this for years. But when we looked at the hymns that are suggested by the Episcopal Musicians Handbook for the Sunday after Christmas, we were a bit dismayed. It's not that they weren't good hymns, texts, but the music wasn't necessarily familiar, nor were some of the hymns really Christmassy. My solution was to disregard the suggestions <laughs> and to sing Christmas music. We only get a couple of weeks when that is appropriate, and we missed a lot of that last year. My comment to Connie was, to paraphrase Jesus, the lectionary and musician's handbook's suggestions were made for us. We weren't made for them. <laughs> So I will err on the side of joy. Amen. I will err on the side of joy because despite the fact that we're still in Advent, we are anticipating that joyous season of Christmas. That time of the year when many of us feel that it is the music that helps make the season bright. It's much the same as at Easter. There are hymns we just have to sing. And yes, we love the music. So much so that when there are two tunes, 
that are possible for one text, arguments can break out over which tune is best. Think, for example, O Little Town of Bethlehem or Away in a Manger. There is magic, as most of us know, in the blending of hymn text and hymn tune. That magic has us humming the hymn as we leave the building, perhaps even later in the week. And often as we're humming, we're recalling the words that went with the music. In short, the combination of music and text helps theology stick in our minds and hearts in ways that a simple reading of the text will do, regardless of how effectively it might be read. This blending of text and music goes back millennia. We don't see it printed in the Book of Common Prayer, but many of the Psalms have instructions before the text begins. Instructions as for the music leader to be sung to the lilies or the silent dove of distant places or lotus blossoms. In other words, the music leader was directed to link a text with a familiar tune with the expectation or hope that those who were singing or listening would go away with the text better fixed in their minds. It hasn't been uncommon throughout church history to set in text to popular music. Think, what child of this to green sleeves? When I was in high school, Christian texts were set to music that I heard on the top 40 radio stations. In youth group, I remember singing Amazing Grace to the animals tune, House of the Rising Sun. Now there's an earworm. <laughs> How the Psalms sounded in ancient Israel is impossible to know. It's equally hard, if not impossible, to know how the hymn texts that are found in the New Testament sounded. But we know that the first Christians sang. Early on, they probably just borrowed from the Jewish tradition, the Psalms, for example. But within the first 50 years of Christian history, hymns specific to the Christian communities were written. And according to the letter to the Colossians, there was a reason for singing them. Quote, the word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to, sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. The New Testament is full of such hymns. And some of them have been part of Christian worship ever since and are included in the Book of Common Prayer, although they are mostly sung at morning and evening prayer. A quick count shows five New Testament hymns, in addition to seven hymns from the Hebrew Scriptures and Apocrypha. Two of those New Testament hymns are part of our service this morning. Both are from the Gospel of Luke and are associated with the birth of Jesus. Indeed, the three great hymns of Luke are all associated with what we would call Advent and Christmas. The Song of Zechariah, what we read this morning as Canticle 16, is from Luke 1, verses 68 to 79, and was sung by John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, at the boy's circumcision. The reaction to the townspeople's uh, of the townspeople to Zechariah's writing down that the child's name would be John was amazement, since it wasn't a family name. And they asked, what then will this child be? In response, Zechariah blessed God for God's faithfulness and mercy, and then foresaw that John would be a prophet of salvation. Zechariah's blessing of God provided the title of the hymn text, the Benedictus. That New Testament hymn became a regular part of Christian worship, at least in the monastic tradition, in the sixth century. It was taken from there into morning prayer in the Anglican tradition. The Song of Mary, or the Magnificat, 
Again, from the first word of the hymn was of course sung by Mary when she went to see her cousin Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, prior to the birth of both boys. While it's harder to trace precursors to Zechariah's hymn, it's easy to see the patterns and themes for the Magnificat in the victory songs of Moses and Miriam and Hannah. Those Old Testament songs or hymns would have been familiar to many early Christians. To have a hymn about Jesus in the same vein would have said a lot about who Jesus was and what he was to accomplish. All of those hymns, including the Magnificat, tell of the great reversals of fortunes accomplished by God on behalf of God's chosen people. Moses sang of horse and rider being hurled into the sea, referring to the Egyptians, of course. Hannah, Samuel's mother, who after being promised a son after decades of childlessness, sang that the bows of mighty warriors are shattered, but those who are stumbling now dress themselves in power. And Mary sings, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. For early Christians, Mary's song was a statement of faith, a statement of what they believed God would accomplish for them. Not only would God's mercy be shown to Mary, not only would God's mercy shown to Mary also be shown to the believers, but there was hope that the promise of justice to all would be made real because of what God was doing through Mary and her son. It was to this hope that Zechariah's hymn also pointed. And like Zechariah's Benedictus, and at about the same time, the sixth century, Mary's Magnificat became a fixture in monastic worship. And from there into the Book of Common Prayer. But we continue to sing both of those hymns, not just because they're part of morning and evening prayer, or because they're part of the readings in Advent. We continue to sing those texts and continue to compose new tunes for them. The number of settings of those two texts over the centuries is astonishing. We continue to sing them because they say something important about who Jesus is and what he came to accomplish, and therefore about the hope we as Jesus's followers have been given, and therefore what we are called to do. New tunes to ancient words simply bring that message forward. As Colossians reminds us, teach each other with all wisdom by singing hymns and psalms and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. The tunes we sing and the texts that are made memorable by the combination of words and music express what we believe about God in ways that words alone may never do. To whatever tunes they are set, they are always appropriate. They were given to us by a God who loves us and who made that love real in Jesus. They are for our hope, our mission, and our joy. Amen. Now, as you are able, please stand and let us join together the recitation of our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, in God is not made, that one be the Father, truly in all things remain, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Spirit, he became an honor for the Virgin Mary and was made man for our 
our Savior, who was crucified on the mountain of Spark. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of all of us. He will come again in glory to judge us living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Lord of God, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipful and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, your response is come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, increase our love to overflowing. Make your church pure and blameless that we may greet with joy the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray especially for our church leaders, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, Gary, our rector, and Nadine, our deacon. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, we long for the light of hope to break into our world, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide us into the way of peace. We pray especially for Joseph, our president, Jared, our governor, for our legislators and courts. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, give us grace to heed the warnings of those calling us to be better stewards of your creation. We thank you for all those, for all of you who have made especially those things that sustain and better our lives. Fill the valleys and make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, you lead us with joy. You delight in our joy. You, cl you clothe us in beauty. We give you thanks for your tender care, especially for those in we now name. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, come great come, Redeemer, come. come. Merciful God, you remember your children. You do not leave us in sorrow or affliction. We name before you, especially those loved ones. Crown your children with glory, clothe them with righteousness, fill the valleys and make low the hills. Merciful God, you have raised us up for salvation through your son. Keep us with all your saints in the eternal life of Christ. We remember before you, especially, Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have done. We have not loved you by our heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everyone. Please be seated. It's good to see you all here this morning. Advent 2. Uh, please, uh, a special welcome to those who are visiting, although I recognize everyone here. So um, please, afterwards, make your way into the parish hall for coffee and some snacks and conversation. And then at 9.15, make your way back here for a conversation about practicing patience with all our hearts, soul, strength, and mind. Um, our patience may be rewarded this week with some snow. Uh, we'll see. Um, then... Hang around or come back at 10.30 for the Gospel Magnificat, the 10.30 service. Um, the choir and there's an ensemble, they've been practicing for weeks and weeks on this. It's gonna be great. Um, and so come back and, and hear that work that they have spent so much time on. Um, I want to uh, put out a thanks this morning to the people who uh, have been tending the grounds, Jim, uh, Renee Shatter, others, getting ready for the fact that snow is going to soon fall um, and making sure that leaves are raked and, and uh, needles are picked up and everything, all of the water is shut off and all of that. Uh, the grounds look great as we go into, into the snow season. And so I'm, I'm grateful to them. Also grateful to uh, Whit and um, Whit Hill and Dave Matthews, who've worked on putting the, the, uh, rail, the framing around our new doors. That looks great. And then to Whit and uh, Ken White, who have done so much work making sure that we have a new security system so that we can um, see what's going on um, around the building. So all of those things have been happening over the last several weeks. And I just want to uh, say thank you to all of those folks. Um, and then a reminder that uh, this coming Saturday, the 11th, from 4.30 to 6.30 is our Living Nativity. Um, come and drive on by, drive on through, bring cans or other uh, non-perishable food. We will give those to Covenant Cupboard. They'll be picked up out of your trunk or backseat, wherever you want to do it. You don't have to get out of your car um, and they will be delivered to Covenant Cupboard uh, to help others have a joyous holiday season. Are there birthdays or anniversaries to observe this morning? Then let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection. resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, Make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you, who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, that his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Yeah. <laughs> 